Um, so, okay, so uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, okay, no, this is, we, we ask any questions that you want, um, Modula, she's okay with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fine with any questions. Uh, so I, so my plan is like uh, to use this talk as a little kind of um, motivation for, uh, uh, also describe the result, but kind of um, motivation to kind of explain how some parts of the program are related. So maybe some people um, uh, are not sure. Um, so, okay, so, so I'll start by talking about this notion of um, rank or Schmidt rank and otherwise um, called strength. Uh, try to explain why it's important in motorics and number theory and algebraic geometry. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll define kind of a refined notion for families of polynomials and try to explain the advantages of that. Okay, so, so well, let me start with, uh, I used to start my talks with a uh, Semiradis theorem, but today I'll talk with, I'll start with Schmidt's theorem. So here is the, uh, here is the theorem of Schmidt. Um, it says the following, uh, suppose you have a uh, uh, collection of polynomials um, in a uh, uh, find over C, say in S variables. And um, um, yeah, then um, I, I, yeah, and of uh, three degrees of say, I mean, Homogeneous um, odd degrees are all bounded by P. Then uh, <clears throat> there exists a constant C depends on D and L such that um, uh, if the number of variables is greater than this constant, then um, it does have many solutions, many common integer solutions. So I'm going to know this by nt of p. This is um, greater or equal than uh, p to the uh, s minus this constant, uh, not for me, I'll write it in this form. Um, that P. P and this constant, this implied constant here can depend on the collection of polynomial. But so okay. capital P means that. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. sorry. Uh, that's uh, so NT P <laughs> is the set of point X smaller equal to T such that uh, uh, PIX zero. And L infinity uh, Okay, so so this is a this is a theorem of Schmidt from 1985, and to um, prove this theorem, he introduced this notion of rank. Um, so definitions. Uh, so let me. He didn't call it by name, he denoted it by, so I'll call this uh, Schmidt rank. Some people call it H invariant. So he denoted this, this quantity by the number H, so maybe this is why it's called the H invariant. And variant. Huh. And other people call it strength. Um, as following, so um, a field, um, then <clears throat> and peak polynomial, uh, then, then I can define the rank. The rank of P is the minimal R such that. Uh, the minimal R such that P can be written as a sum of products of lower degree polynomials. Uh, 
um, with a convention that if P is linear, D equals one, if degree B equals big P, then the rank is infinite. Okay, so, um, so I try to find the minimal representation of a polynomial P as a, as a sum of products of polynomials of lower degree. So for example, if P is of rank one, then it's just decomposable. Okay, um, so what did he do with this? Uh, 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 so what did, how did Schmidt use this definition? Um, so here's another theorem of Schmidt is that, let me phrase it quickly. Um, ah, yeah, I should say, may, let me say it quickly because this will be kind of If you have a collection of polynomials, if uh, P is a collection of polynomials, then you can define the rank of the collection. This is how Schmidt defined it, and also in this, these other definitions, these other places um, as uh, uh, the minimal min minimum over the rank of Q for Q in the case in the span of P1 linear span of P1 through PL, Q not zero. Okay, so you should notice that rank depends on the degree. So if I have a low, the, the, if I have a degree D polynomial, then the rank, I, I try to represent the polynomial as a sum of products of polynomials of lower degree. But so this, these linear combinations can be of lower rank, but yeah. Um, you want okay. to tell me the minimum or the maximum? Minimum. Okay, so I want the collective a collective collection of polynomials to be of high rank. That's if all, okay. if any linear combination is of high rank, good things happen. That's good. that's what Schmidt. That was Schmidt's theorem. So let me let me write that. Um, you don't need no. Okay, you can define it for homogeneous polynomials or for non-homogeneous polynomials. You can either define it by taking the rank of the homogeneous part, or it just adds one if it's not homogeneous. So, so it doesn't usually matter. <clears throat> um, so, what did Schmidt prove? Uh, uh, he proved that. Uh, so, we let P be at the bottom as. Uh, to the side as a uh, pair, um, then uh, uh, then if the uh, if the rank um, the rank the Q rank of P, so maybe I should note here that this rank really depends um, depends on the uh, I should write it a bit given an R. So this this really depends on on the field you you start out with and. Going, if you go to a field extension, then your rank might drop. Um, okay, so if uh, if the Q rank of uh, of P is uh, is greater than a constant, depending on D and L, um, then um, uh, then uh, then actually, so if I have a sufficiently high rank collection of polynomials. Um, that actually I have an asymptotic count for the number of solutions. So then uh, uh, it's number MTP is equal to U times B to the S minus the sum of the degrees. This is the correct, the, the correct order of magnitude. Um, L plus uh, O of P of S minus I minus delta, sub delta greater than zero, and mu is greater than zero, and is the product product of local identities. It doesn't doesn't matter doesn't matter from what this is for for but but the point is that high rank implies kind of equidistribution properties, I think of this as kind of equidistribution properties of this collection of polynomials that can actually have an asymptotic count. Is it T? T. Where is T? Yeah. 
Thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is Schmidt. And, uh, and uh, okay, so let me move. So this is Schmidt uh, something like 40 years ago. And, uh, and let me switch to another world. Um, so now in the context of, so this is like my number theory context. And then in the additive combinatorics context, Um, so people are, well, interested or in many questions in additive combinatorics, uh, uh, especially in questions that use higher order Fourier analysis, one very quickly, so in, in higher order Fourier analysis, this is something that you'll probably hear about throughout the year here, higher order, or I've heard of before. Don't want, to, don't, want to, don't want to get into definitions now, but, but really what you encounter, um, one encounter is um, exponential polynomials. So and over, over finite things, um, one encounters uh, exponential polynomials. Exponential polynomials, and then polynomials. If there's something of the form, let me fix the field. Let me think of SP. This will be a prime field and so this little p and I look at, uh, at, at something of the form EP Q of X where EP is just e to the two coming I over P. And I think of Q of X is a polynomial P at front to XS. And, and the point in these questions in this context is that we want to, we're looking for properties that are independent of the number of variables. So we want to think of S as being huge and, and, and we have some, well, we're setting some, some properties of these, these exponential polynomials. And specifically, it's important for us that, um, that we're able to uh, estimate exponential sums involving these polynomials. And, very quickly, we encounter the problem that um, whereas linear polynomials, linear exponential polynomials are orthogonal, um, for uh, the minute you go up in the degree, it's no longer true. So um, for example, uh, no, no longer true, uh, when, uh, uh, P is greater than one. Um, the easiest, or the, the first example you can see is think if you have two quadratic forms. And you try to estimate the exponential sum. So here I'll also introduce the notation. So I, V for me will be FP to the N. <clears throat> okay, and this notation means I'm averaging, so I'm summing over all points and dividing by p to the n. And I look at the exponential sum of e p of q1 x minus q2 x. This is this, I me measure the correlation between these two exponential polynomials. And, um, and this thing is, uh, is not zero, it's, it depends really on the rank of the difference of the rank between these, if it's a if pure quadratic forms, then this is something like one over p to the rank of rank of the difference over two or something like that. Okay, so so very quickly we encounter the problem that if we try to uh, to understand the correlation between these two, as then this rank pops up, <clears throat> and. Uh, so, uh, uh, so motivated by this, uh, Green and Chow, um, probably unaware of this work of Schmidt, but um, Green and Chow uh, uh, introduced a slightly different notion, notion, I'll call it a measurable rank. It was for a polynomial P, it was the minimal R 
such that um, I can write P as some function of R1 to RR, um, where RI are of lower degree. Okay, rather than this kind of very explicit expression as a sum of products, and I can write it in this form. Um, and, and what they showed is that, uh, and they showed, um, they showed that um, uh, high rank, let me high rank, I'll write this in a non-quantitative non form, <clears throat> high rank, this measurable rank. Uh, collections of polynomials um, are uh, jointly uh, distributed. Okay, so this is a this is a non. I'll write the quantitative uh, form uh, in a second. You see that I. Not something that I forgot to say. Um, yeah. So, uh, so what is the what is the theorem? What is the exact theorem? Okay. So, so but then, so I should mention, but um, it was later later shown. Later shown. Maybe I should say to the end. First of all, this was. Um, yeah. Okay. Never mind. It was late, later shown that. Uh, um, in characteristic, uh, in characteristic greater than, if the characteristic is greater than the degree, then, um, then these notions was shown by Palmet. Love it. Uh, that these notions are actually Notions, these notions, no, no, notions, notions are actually equivalent. Um, so, so basically, this note, and, and, and actually, and, and from now on, let's we're going to restrict our talk from now on to this. This I can describe this kind of discuss maybe later some problems that come up in. Small characteristic, but but in, in in the minute the characteristic of the field is greater than the degree, then then actually these notions, uh, this this notion of uh, of this measurable rank notion and the Schmidt rank notion are <clears throat> are equivalent, and uh, um, and what is the theorem? I'm here. Yeah. Just to be sure, uh, you say that with high rank, you're jointly equidistributed. Uh, when you have a polynomial which is not linear, it itself does not need to be equidistributed, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So this so, is a, a two, two So clause. high rank, no, the high rank, to say about a collection that it, that's why it's a minimum, Avi asked minimum or maximum. To say about a high a collection that it's equidistributed, that it's high rank, that in particular means that each one of the polynomials is high rank because it lies in its own in the span okay so it's a it tells you that anything in the linear span is still high rank right so so you're saying joint equidistribution but in particular also self -equity. yeah yeah in yeah particular. in particular you're right i want to write it in this form because the talk is going to be focused on what yes. happens for families but as you as you uh, know this so well, the theorem that i'll write will be a theorem about one polynomial which can be one one we can extract the result about the joint equidistribution from from uh, from that um, so uh, uh, so what's a theorem uh, so I'll, I'll attribute it to green uh, cow Janser and best bounds are very recent. This is two independent works in 2019. Janser's result has some dependence on the characteristics. So the strongest result is, is the Milicevic result, but, but they're of similar, uh, similar form. Uh, this was non-quantitative and this was not quantitative. 
So this was non-quantitative. This showed an independence of the field. Uh, this, these results are good quantitative in a good way. <clears throat> um, so, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so in heuristic, um, for any t greater than zero, um, there's a constant which depends on d l. Uh, okay, I did write it. I did write it in this. Okay, I write both of them. Uh, first, I write the equidistribution, and then I write the the key kind of input into that. Uh, there exists a constant depending on d l and t <clears throat> such that uh, uh, if the rank of I, I wanted to write it in the same form as Schmidt's result. <clears throat> if the, the rank of, of a collection P um, is, uh, is greater than this constant, greater than this P, uh, then, um, and then, then the size of the number of Q points, of uh, FQ points, so I'll write this, let me write it in this form and explain. Divided by P to the F minus L. So P is collection P1 through PL. And XA, this one is the set of all points X such that PIX. This AI, so I pick some level set of level sets of these this collection of polynomials, and I want to count how many points I have. So, so each one of these gets its fair share of points. I have through the L such such A's, and each one of them gets a fair share with a level of equidistribution um, uh, that is governed by this T over here. So this thing is smaller than one over Q to the T. Um, and, and this C is the uh, um, polynomial in um, L and in uh, Tommy. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, P, P appears too many times in my to my test. You're absolutely uh, right. So, this yeah, will turn into a Q. Because so a P is the, the only, only, and this will turn into Q's, okay? That a okay? Is a field. P is a field. So yeah, you have the collection of polynomials. Uh, and define a field. What's the field? So on the top right is Q's, yes? Sorry? Uh, this one. Okay. And what is the little Q that appears on the right hand side? It's because of these results are true for any for any uh, any finite field. So I think of a finite field as Q, but I then I have to describe. Sorry, <laughs> so many fixes for one uh, thing. But then, uh, yeah, it's just otherwise I can't write this EP. And I need to write a character. And so instead of doing that, I decided to all the everything is true for for any finite field. But I wanted to. Uh, uh, I wanted to write it just in this form. Uh, so, so yeah, P equals Q. Uh, <laughs> that would be fine. Uh, okay, so, so this is a drill that, and, 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 and the, the, the main, the main, uh, uh, the main ingredient in this result is what, what we call a kind of a biased rank. Uh, I have uh, to bother you again. What is the notion you promised to explain? Is the x a, x a of is the number of solutions? Yeah, I count how many x's I have to satisfying q i equals a i. Yeah, that's level set. The number of level sets is q to the l. So each one gets its fair fair share. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, this is why that's why I think of this as joint equidistribution. But really, what's what's going on behind this theorem is the is the bias rank. 
he just who, who's asking about he decides the level of equity distribution you want you know how close you want it to be you tell me how close i tell you how big a rank you need for this to happen okay depending on your application what you need to do is depending on how how good an estimate you need um excellent so uh so what is the, the bias rank theorem again let me say it in character street it is indeed um it says that if if you have bias if the exponential if you have one polynomial q did i mention here it's very crucial this is the, the crucial thing is here is that independent of number of variables. Okay, that's that's kind of the the, the key thing that that's that's crucial in this uh in this uh in this thing over here and also in applications that you're thinking of for higher order we so what is the bias rank theorem tell you it tells me that if you have a polynomial on Q and uh, and it's biased so if you have, if your exponential sum is biased, it's greater than um, one over p to the t, then this is biased. Then this implies that q is low rank, meaning that the rank of q <clears throat> is smaller than. Uh, 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 D uh, T to the other constant depending on D. So these are these are the 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 quantitative re this the quantitative results of um, meter to H. Let me say something about these constants. So these this constant I think is double exponential, and this one is exponential in D, and and having kind of chatted with this kind of motivating Jan's talk on Wednesday. So having um, chatted about this with Jan, it seems that maybe with, with his methods, one can prove these theorems in a completely algebraic geometric way um, with uh, this thing being linear in D, maybe polynomial here. So, so it's kind of motivating you to um, if these kind of questions are, or any of these questions are of interest to you, then then some methods coming from algebraic geometry can say um, some some really nice things about uh, about uh, uh, about these bounds. And uh, um, this is uh, Jan will talk about this in the learning seminar. These the methods in the learning seminar on Wednesday, on Thursday this week. Normally Wednesday, but this this Wednesday is. This Thursday. Anyway, this week is on Thursday. Um, okay. So, uh, so, so one more, one more context. I wanna, I wanna bring this up in this uh, very shortly before I, before I come to actually the the the, re, the refined notion I want to talk about is is another place where this kind of notion pops up, and this is in uh, in uh, mutative algebra or algebraic geometry. And um, uh, and here uh, and here you can think you have some fields and um, uh, and uh, some some polynomial. Uh, There's a question about the. It is not you raised the not P. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. Uh, you have some polynomial rings over a field, um, and you have some ideal, I is an ideal, and there is this, uh, there's a way to measure, um, uh, to measure uh, the complexity or some measure of, 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 some way of measuring the complexity of an ideal. Um, is uh, by the length of uh, a projective resolution or minimal projective resolution. 
quickly say what this is, but you can look it up later. So if you have an ideal eye, then you might want to try and resolve it by a sequence of projective modules, um, PM. And if you can do this, then this is called the projective resolution and M is the projective dimension. So M is um, the projective dimension. There's a, there's a well-known theorem. Okay, I'll leave that, which one of the Schmitt's should I leave? I'll, okay, the definition we know by now, hopefully. Uh, there's a well-known theorem of a uh, pivot. <clears throat> says that uh, uh, if I was in K, in, if I is an ideal in K of X1 through XS, then the projective resolution, any, any projective resolution, Oh, sorry, minimal. Yeah, okay, minimal projective resolution is of length smaller or equal than the number of variables. Okay, so, um, and there was a conjecture, still then, two else, which is now a theorem is now a theorem of a manian um, that if, uh, if you knew if I is generated by some polynomials Q1 through QL of degrees, bounded by D, then, um, then, uh, uh, then the projective dimension could be bounded by some constant that depends only on L and D. Guys, you can see that it resembles a little this, this context of this theorem. And, um, uh, and, Maybe unsurprisingly, to uh, prove this theorem, um, Ananian and Hofstede introduce the Schmidt rank, which they call strength. Um, to prove this. Um, this. Tommy, can, you lift, can you lift the board below? Can I? Lift Leave the, the board. board. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me erase this. I like this thing. Oh, yeah. Which one do you want? Uh, you this one. Ah, lift this one up. Not erase. This is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped climbing, so it's now for <laughs> Uh, uh, okay. Um, right. So, uh, so to prove this, uh, uh, to prove uh, theorem, uh, Ananian and Hofstra uh, introduced um, a notion of strength, the notion. called strength, um, which happens to be exactly, which is really Schmidt rank. <clears throat> okay, and, and what they showed is that if you have, so, as it, so in the number theory context, if you have high rank collection polynomials that I erased the, I, erase the wrong Schmidt one. Then you have kind of asymptotic formula and in the additive combinatorics or in the additive combinatorics or finite field geometry case, if you have uh, 
higher high rank collection of polynomials and they're equidistributed. And what they showed is that if you, if you have if uh, or I, so what they showed is that high rank uh, collections of polynomials um, are um, are very independent, very independent. They, they behave like, they think of it as behave like independent random variables, very independent, but in what they need independent is that uh, they form what is called a regular sequence. But really what this thing, to, what, what, this, what this thing would tell you that really you can treat them as, you can actually treat them as, as in the Hilbert CCG theorem. You can, the length of the projective resolution is the number, if you, for sufficiently high rank collections of polynomials, the length of projective resolution is exactly the size of the collection. Okay, yeah. And this implies that length of resolution is, uh, size <clears throat> Okay, so, uh, uh, excellent. Um, did I want to say? So, so what's, uh, so, so what's the bottom line that, that I want you to take from, from this thing is that, uh, it's really good to have, uh, a high rank collections of polynomials. Okay, so, uh, number theory of okay, this, so, uh, uh, asymptotic counts and asymptotics uh, about this joint equity distribution. So high rank collections of polynomials are great in the sense that, uh, and, and here they have to satisfy some algebraic independence. Okay, so they, they satisfy a lot of a lot of these uh, and 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 many and, and other 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 great properties. But they're really good. It's really you you really want to have a high rank collection of polynomials, but uh, but then you're faced with a problem that if you start with some collection of polynomials, then it's not normally well generically probably yes, but if you start with a collection of polynomials, it's not necessarily a chiron. So the problem is, is that uh, not every collection chiron. Of course, the, in, all, 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 in all places here, people were faced with this problem because you are given just an arbitrary collection of poly polynomials and want to be able to say something about it. And, um, and the solution, not the solution, okay, the solution to this problem, this was already why Schmidt introduced this notion is that it's, a, it's very amenable for this kind of an inductive process. You start with a collection of polynomials. If it's not of high rank, that means that there is some linear combination that is low rank. So discard of that polynomial, add in the other polynomials that come in for the low rank representations and repeat. Okay, so let me write this quickly down. So there's this process uh, of re regularization. Which starting, you start with a collection of P1 to PL. This is an original collection. And if it's a high rank, if this is, I, I'm back to proof. Sorry. But now, uh, now the finite field is not in the picture for the moment. Okay, so so I start up with some uh, some collection of polynomials. If it's a high rank, if it is a high rank, but you should observe that in all these theorems, or I should make note even. Already, already uh, in this theorem of Schmidt that I erased, and everywhere, in order to have, in order to use this Bayek's rank theorem and to get this notion of equidistribution, you have to have. Um, so, to say is for a collection to be of, of high rank, it really means 
that there, well, at least with a, with a conjecture at bounds, it would be at least linear um, in the number of polynomials in the collection. Even in the quadratic case, right? In the quadratic case, if I want a collection of quadratic forms to be equidistributed, I need I need for each pair of them, I need to beat, I need to beat um, uh, the number, the, 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 I need to beat the, 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 the bound that I have over here. So I have to beat this P to the P to the L. So the number of uh, um, so so it's crucial for me. So so it's at the moment we have polynomial bounds even for the finite field case and um, for the uh, Schmidt I think it's linear in the in the number of polynomials. But but it's not, okay. But you start off with an arbitrary collection and it's not a high rank. So what do you do? Uh, if it's a sufficiently high rank, you're you're happy and you can prove whatever you want. And if not, <coughs> if not, um, you have some one of them, say PL, is a linear combination uh, to yeah to L minus one of the previous ones plus some low rank representation, say. 2L, okay, just, just to be concrete for, 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 for in, even in the quadratic case. So, so I, have, I, have to add, uh, I have to add this thing. So what can I do? I can discard PL from my collection, replace, so replace PL. Well, if you're in Schmidt's case, then it would be sufficient for you to replace PL by any, any either the S's or the RIs. You just want to find zeros of polynomial for the original result of Schmidt, you just want to find um, rational or integer points. So if you can find integer points for one of these polynomials, for, for, for all the S's or all the I's, it's enough, but by either, by to replace it by P1 through PL minus one, and maybe S1 to S2L, and yes or no, sometimes depending on which, what for your application, you might need also, Either this, either just this one, or both of them together. For Schmidt, it suffices to, to adjust these in, and then you repeat. And how do you know that this process terminates? Uh, because linear polynomials are of infinite strength. So each time the degrees, the degrees of these polynomials are lower, so this terminates uh, because um, it terminates because. Uh, uh, linear d equals one is infinite strength. <laughs> See, strength, I use strength, infinite strength, infinite strength, or whatever. Okay, so so this process terminate, but what's the problem? So this is this is great. This is what Schmidt did, and this Green Cloud did this, and Anand and Hochstel did this. And but what's uh, what's the problem is that this blows up very quickly. So. Each time you need to beat the number of polynomials you have in the previous step. So, so at each time you you try to run this process, then this grows worse than the power of polynomials. So there's this calculation that Trevor Woolley did, and it's grows really bad. So this is this is uh, this is uh, this is the starting okay. Ah, yeah, this is kind of the starting point. The starting point of my talk is to say. Okay, so we're faced with this problem that on the one hand, we know that high rank collections of polynomials are awesome. And on the other hand, this regularization process is very extensive. And um, what can we do to, uh, um, can we maybe, is there something we can do to make this, uh, to, to, to still keep this great, these great properties and, and, and a more effective uh, uh, regularization process? And, and this is, uh, this is a joint work uh, with Chai uh, Lampelos, who is here this year. And so we were looking for uh, looking for um, more refined notion of right that will be the same for one polynomial. So it will not. It will be the same for for one polynomial, but um, uh, refined for, for collections, for collections of polynomials. Uh, 
um, that will be that uh, will have uh, same good properties, same great properties, uh, but uh, uh, um, uh, cheaper regularization process. I write it very small so that I don't have to write the letters correctly. <laughs> okay, so this is this is the task we we, we started out with, and and the idea was to um, to relativize the notion. So let me here's like a really simple definition. If you have a uh, if you have a, uh, some. <clears throat> uh, vector space B, X some subset, subset, X subset, then, um, um, and you have some polynomial P. So V I identify it with K to the S, um, and you have some polynomial in K to S1 to S, S. and um, you can define a, uh, the relative rank, the rank of rank of P, restricted to X. So it's very simple. If you do this for any subset, you can just define it as um, the minimal R such that I can write P as a sum of uh, R I S I I equals one to R, um, but restricted to X. Okay, I don't demand for this to be true on the entire space. I just want this, I want the minimal representation restricted to this subset X. And of course, in my case, I would be interested. So what happens uh, 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 specifically, and specifically, um, you can think of, the, think of the case where X is uh, uh, given by some, large collection of polynomials, <clears throat> okay? So you have a, it could be, okay, this is this you can define for anything, but you could think that you have a one given polynomial and your X is actually already given by the locus of, of a, a collection of polynomials. But the point is you, you should think of this as this collection of polynomials downstairs is huge, okay? So you can't in any way, you don't wanna involve P and this collection together. So, um, um, Okay, and then you can do this for so so you can do this uh, um, you can do this in this way. You could also you can think of it if so if you, and if you have if you have uh, if you have some filtered collections or say some some a bunch of collections of polynomial q one q two and so on. So this ordered collection of polynomials you can define the rank of each collection given given the collection restricted to the locus of the collection below. Okay, so, so I can do this and I just, this is just a two layer thing, but I can do it as a, as a any, any layered collection. Each time I'm, I'm restricting to the locus of the polynomials defined by, the pre, by all the previous levels. So Q3, I would restrict to whatever is defined by these two. So I don't, I don't wanna define it, but you can define a notion of, of relative rank for for filtered collection of polynomials, and um, uh, I erase. Let me leave the properties. Um, and then what we can prove is the. Uh, uh, did I want to say something? Let me just check that if I wanted to say something else before this. Not that I really can see what's written here, but uh, not entirely clear. Uh, yeah, so let me, uh, I can't see. Uh, uh, so, so if you can define this notion, here is the, um, so here is, uh, 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 and, and this notion is much more, if you do this kind of relative notion, it's much more amenable to this process of regularization. You can prove this theorem. So 
let me write the theorem is that given uh, this is over finite fields, so uh, FP P greater than D, so I have a collection of polynomials Q1. <clears throat> I'm given just an arbitrary collection of polynomials Q1 through Q then given, given this collection, um, I can find there exists a, a larger collection, uh, R1 through RL, with L depending on the, uh, given a collection, given the level of administration, T greater than zero. <laughs> Given a, given a, a level of equidistribution T, a collection of polynomials Q1 through QL, I can get a new collection of polynomials Q R1 through R big L, um, L where L is L of D and little l um, uh, polynomial. Crucial things, this new collection is polynomial in L, such that, um, first of all, uh, um, each one of the QIs is in the ideal generated by this R1 through RL. Okay, so I can, if this collection is, this collection R1 RL is going to be of high rank and it will have like a, a, an exact Nullstein set. So actually you would be able to write each one of these Qs as a sum of products of polynomials or the polynomials in this collection down here. And, and then, so, so, so first of all, each of the QIs in this, in this ideal generated by this polynomial number and L, little l number of polynomials and, uh, and, uh, and, there, and the QI and the RIs are jointly equidistributed. Um, which means that, so I just copy this, that, um, okay, I'll just write it, X, A, P divided by P, S minus L minus one, smaller than one over P to the T, where, um, yeah, same, um, but no, sorry, this is, the only difference is that this is big L. This is the new number of polynomials. So I can I start out with my collection of polynomials. In a polynomial number of steps in the original set of polynomials, I can get a new collection, which is highly equidistributed. So actually it satisfies this same kind of bias rank theorem. Yeah, I'm almost out of time, so I'll, I'll, it satisfies this, this, this same Bias rank theorem, except that here, um, except that here, um, except that here, I average over only x coming from this relative set from below, and this thing is true if x is of sufficiently high rank. Okay, or relative rank, if it's a filtered, if X is given by this filtered collection of polynomials, but if X is of sufficiently higher high rank, then, then we can relativize this. We got, but this is, but I have to say, this is an intrinsic, in, this is the key. This is an intrinsic property of X, of the, of, the, of the variety below. It's, this variety below is given by this collection of polynomials and it has to be of high rank with respect to itself. It doesn't know of P of, of this, it doesn't know of this polynomial at all. And it just has to be sufficient. As if, I think it's, it's, the, it's a similar to, to saying that it doesn't, when you, when you have the original theorem, it doesn't matter what the dimension of the vector space is below because vector spaces are infinite, you know, are collect, given by linear polynomials, that's infinite rank. So this is a similar condition. It's independent of the size. It's an intrinsic condition on X. It's independent of the size of X. X could be generated by zillions of polynomials, but a branch 
that is greater than some whatever is needed polynomial we know in the size for this to be sufficiently regular and then this theorem still holds and this is what kind of feeds inside this theorem over here which makes this uh this regularization process uh possible i think this that might be a good time to start Questions? I want to say, um, so uh, I'm still trying to digest the statement of the stamp. So the, the R, uh, what's the conditional on their degree? Okay, I start, I, start with a, I start with a collection of L polynomials, and I start this regularization process. But instead of regularizing, instead of doing this thing I did before, add all the, I regularize with respect to what happens below. So I find a polynomial that is not relatively regular with respect to the thing below, but this is only, it, to say that, then because of this bias rank theorem, it only depends on, on its level. It doesn't depend on what happens below. So the condition, the number of polynomials I add depends only on, what the problem I had with the regularization process below is that you feed in new polynomials in the system and then you have to work with all of them. And the minute you do that, then that blows up. But in this relative situation, at each time, you just need to worry what happens at your own level. And then, so, so you start up with L, you end up with some polynomial number in L. Each time you do this regularization with respect to the, the whatever you had before. And, and then, so you don't get an algebra, you get an ideal. You can't add everybody. You just need, to, you, you have to add, it's, it's what the process that Schmidt does. So you, you, and, and yeah, so, so you do this, uh, so you, you get an ideal. So when these guys vanish, then this guy vanishes as well. And, and these are not that many more polynomials than what you started out with. And they satisfy all the great properties that you wanted. This relative notion still maintains all the good properties that you wanted before. So from these ones that we have over here, uh, using, using, using kind of model theoretic properties, you can show that, you know, not only over finite fields, but say for complex fields uh, or complex field or algebraically closed field of characteristic greater than P, you can show that high relative rank collections of polynomials are form a regular sequence as, as it is over here. And, and you can show this equidistribution property, and this is a work in progress. This, this, uh, to, to make this work for the Schmidt argument, then, then uh, um, then there's still work, uh, some stuff needs to be understood. Did I answer your question or yeah, not? I love it. Yeah, it's better than my question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about, what about the counting aspects of the high rank polynomials? Uh, so you mentioned briefly, do you, you know that a generic polynomial is high rank? Do you have I think uh, Arthur showed this, right? If Arthur, you showed. Um, <laughs> no. Um, so what do I say? Um, yes, uh, generic here of the complex membership list, uh, the rank of a polynomial is about n minus d minus first root of n, something like this. So, so this is a, generically way. is what goes to infinity the uh, as n goes to infinity number of variables number of variables so you don't know for a fixed number of variables a fixed number of uh, I mean uh, and then there's a formula that looks a bit more complicated but it's pretty close to it. so I have a question. Oh. Uh, so the notion of equidistribution is pretty loose here, right? And it's not uh, equidistribution in, I don't know, classical sense. It's a lower bound on the number of solutions. Which no, no, is, no, no, uh, no, no, for the high rank, for the high, this is not, this is real true equidistribution, not, few non-equidistributed, low rank. This is, this is, uh, this is, Schmidt, Schmidt started with, you can't, hope for an arbitrary collection of polynomials to have any equidistribution. Right. You, what you can hope to do with Schmidt is to the dependence of the dependence on this L here is on the number of polynomials that is constant. This is what Trevor Woolley calculated. This is horrible. 
right? It comes from this regularization process, and you can hope that you can make this polynomial now. Then I so if you start with an arbitrary collection of polynomials, you, you have no hope of equity distribution for the original right. collection. But you can find uh, within the variety defined by these polynomials, you can find a bounded codimension, polynomially bounded codimension subvariety on which you can do anything, count whatever you want, subspace, whatever you need to count on the, on, the, on the thing below, you can do whatever you want. Like it's as regular, as good as you want. So, and if you're willing to go to a subvariety of bounded codimension, but bounded in a good bound, like a good bound, like for many results in additive commentors, you don't care so much if you go to some subset of polynomially bounded codimension. Well, not the not exact codimension, but the you're, you're, you have some density, you go to some density delta to some O of one, then you're still happy. And this is what happens here. If you start with some collection, you can go to sub, you know, something of, in the finite field case, you'd go to something of density delta to the O of something, so you don't lose too much, and, but there you can do anything. Okay, so that's why it's enough that you generate uh, another set of polynomials, which is equidistributed and uh, exactly. just, uh, the original set is in the ideal. Yeah. Did you get polynomial? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's the that's the whole point of this thing is to make this uh is to make this uh polynomial, this ideal poly, poly, with a polynomial number and the number in the in the original number. So you start with L polynomials, you get L to some power of polynomials. Is it like polynomial codimension or like uh, yeah, a no logarithmic dimension? Okay. Yeah, that's that's the point. Okay, and no other questions?